Greetings and salutations. You've arrived at After Dark with Super Marcy. Join your host, Super Marcy, as she brings you a show that's a little darker, sexier, and edgier. With sexploitation cinema, topical discussions, and all things that happen after dark. Listener discretion is advised, as this podcast will feature coarse language and adult themes. Remember, what happens after dark stays after dark. Hello and welcome to the debut episode of After Dark with Super Marcy. I am your host, Super Marcy, and thank you for joining me, After Dark. This podcast series will range from in-depth discussions and casual chats about a variety of topics, including cinema and some adult topics, to kick off this new podcast and discuss some sexually repressed nuns. I am joined by my guest, is the host of the Schlock and Awe podcast, Lindsay Wilkins. Hello and welcome. Hello, Marcy. I do, I have to say, I do love your uh, sexy intro voice. It's, it's... Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ooh, we're starting this way. Okay. Ooh. Well, have to set the mood a little bit. You do. <laughs> Especially because both of us are sweltering in 35 degree yeah. heat. Well, not quite yet, but uh, we're, we're, we're trying to play it cool. <laughs> yes. yes. And and for, for anybody who doesn't use Celsius, it's something like in the 90s. It's, it's getting close to the hundreds, yeah. Yeah, it's fairly warm. It is. And we're trying to keep cool and not have air conditioners come on our microphones. Mm, yes. So, we're sweltering like we're, you know, in a 17th nunnery. century <laughs> nuns. <laughs> yes. Because that looked sweaty. I loved how the, the, all those nuns looked. You oh. just like, oh, you smell disgusting and you're all sweaty. <laughs> oh, I'm glad it, the, the, none of these movies were like smell vision or yes. anything. Can you imagine the sweat in wearing oh, all those layers? Oh. Just an Oliver Reed alone. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, I reckon I could stand his smell. <laughs> 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 Mr. Oliver. Mr. Anyway. Yes. Yes, <laughs> oh. But, yeah, one of the uh, cool things that uh, I'll be doing on After Dark is having awesome guests like yourself. Okay. And on on occasion I'll do a double feature. So it's a little schlock and ori, but not quite. Yours is a bit different. You have the trailers and it's like a fun driving experience almost. But here we're just going to talk about nuns. We are. <laughs> and I do actually love this double because it is a little bit schlock and awe. Like, I wasn't expecting Benedetta, Benedetta to be as thoughtful as it was. Yeah. Um, even though I should have known with the great Paul Verhoeven. But um, no, this is a definite little bit of a schlock and awe to enter your, the episode, which I kind of like. So no, I'm looking forward to where this podcast goes. Yeah, it um it does it is a little schlock and ori with mm. these two, mm. but I'm like, you know what? I mean, I know that I did. I picked Showgirls for your show. You did. But Showgirls yeah, did. and Benedetta would have been great for schlock and ori. Maybe you can find someone to do that. Maybe because I, when I was watching Benedetta, all I could think Maybe. of was like, oh my god, this is like Showgirls but with nuns. <laughs> it, it is. I've, I've heard that comparison, and that got me so intrigued for that movie. Mm. But then you're watching it and it's like a whole nother level, but it's still there. It's, it's so still there. Yeah, it's not like it is showgirls. This is a much, yeah, when we'll get into Benedetta, but it's mm. so much more thoughtful, so much more provoking, so much more um, ambiguous as into mm. different characters' um, motivations, shall we say, where there's um, what I like about the devils, because I can't say it normally because it is the devils, um, yeah. is much more... Not straightforward. Straightforward is the wrong word for that movie. Yeah, no, it's um, it's on the nose, I think. Yes, kind much of more thing. on the nose, yeah. yes. Especially because yeah. this is the second time I've seen it. So um, it was much more, oh, yeah. I can see clearly what's what's happening with, with the story. But no, Benedict, yeah. you have to, you're questioning motivations quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> and I think, yeah, the devils actually, you sort of understand, not understand, but the motivations of people actually makes Sense. Yes, politically, think, sexually, yeah. emotionally, moustache-wise, they all make sense. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
Yeah, and Benedetta kind of isn't quite like that, but we'll definitely yes. get into the similarities and everything between the two films. But, yeah, we'll definitely start off with The Devil. The Devil, from, yes. From the amazing Ken Russell, who yes. is, I mean, I know he, he hasn't been with us for quite some time, but I had not seen a lot of his films until the past few years, and he's, like, rising right up there as one of my favourites. He, Just uh, yeah, the mind-bending. It really right? is. I'm still trying to tackle a lot of Ken Russell because he is so subvertive, so very over-sexualized mm. in every single one of his movies, mm. um, and then you will see a snake woman come out of a basket. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> Um, and robots with breasts and whatever that thing is in Gothic. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm still trying to wrap my the the devil the devils is actually the easier movie to wrap your head around than some of his other movies. Which considering what happens in the devils is kind of surprising. Yeah, um, but he's still the director I'm trying to grapple with because he can go he takes everything to thirteen. <laughs> Much yeah, like David, but in a very different way. <laughs> yeah, they they are actually um they have similarities, mm. but they're both different. Yes, and I I love that Ken Russell just is it's like a fever dream when you watch mm. one of his films. And I, I did last year. It was I just, I watched Gothic for the first mm. time and Lair of the White Worm, mm. and they're so different, but they're so similar, but they're so different. Yes, and it's pure insanity, and the Devils really is kind of pure it's, insanity it really is um because we yes we came here to talk about repressed nuns um getting sexy time on but this is not what either of these do um mm. and it kind of makes it more fascinating both the big critiques of the catholic church um even though yeah. i know Verhoeven's much more of a scholar when it comes to jesus and, mm. and faith and all that kind of thing um, yeah and russell's just literally poking poking at the catholic church going you suck you suck you suck, mm. you suck. this is why you suck you and, suck and <laughs> i completely applaud him for that <laughs> yes and... <laughs> which is why this movie's still so hard to find <laughs> oh it's still so controversial it's so difficult to actually see the full version yes it's it's insane but we'll get we'll go straight into the devil yes the devil's burn an explosive film absolutely brilliant abc tv superbly frighteningly effective time magazine but of course i can prove nothing this mother superior may be little more than a hysterical nun exactly mere conjecture and what form does this incubus take? The Devils is not a film for everyone. Vanessa Redgrave, Oliver Reed, in Ken Russell's film of The Devils. Directed by Ken Russell, was written by Ken Russell, mm. and it was based on two things, mm. which I did quite a little bit of just looking into these things in my research. I was based on a play, sort of not as much as it could have been, Mm. um, but play by John Whiting, Mm. and then the novel The Devils of Loudon by Aldous Huxley, which I think that acted as more of a template than the play, but they're both kind of there. Yeah. And as as we've mentioned his name already several hundred times, uh, it stars Oliver Reed. Yes. And he plays Urban Grandeur. Mm. Vanessa Redgrave plays Sister Jean, mm. I believe. I, I'm not going to say any of these names, right? I'm just. Oh, oh no. Um, I'm just saying I... this right now. <laughs> it's going to get worse when we get into Benedetta, which is just as oh, Italian just as with French. Yeah. And it, I, French I... and everything. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll try to get through the rest of the cast and characters as best as I can. We've got uh, Dudley Sutton as Baron de Lubardemont. Yes. Uh, Max Adrian as Iber. Mm-hmm. Gemma Jones as Madeline. Yes. Uh, Murray Melvin as Mignon. Michael Gothard as father, I think it's Barre. 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 A bar or Barre? I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Georgina Hale as Philippe. Brian Murphy as Adam. Then we got a simple one. Mm. Uh, We had Christopher Lug as Cardinal Richelieu. Yes. I probably said that wrong. Richelieu? Richelieu? Very very much based on a real, well, I think even Grandier was based on an actual person who was burnt at the stake. Yeah. And Graham Armitage 
as King Louis the Thirteenth. Yeah. And I have taken the plot synopsis from IMDb just to give us the quick summary. So in 17th century France, Father Urbain Grandieu seeks to protect the city of London from the corrupt establishment of Cardinal Rich Richelieu. I can't mm. <laughs> Hysteria occurs within the city when he is accused of rich witchcraft by a sexually repressed nun. But as we know, there's a lot more to the film than just that. There is, even to Vanessa Redgrave's character, who is the noted sexually repressed nun. Mm. It's yeah, I mean this is. I mean, you start this movie starts off with the King of France yeah. pretty much doing a RuPaul runway. Mm-hmm. Um like- which I, I wasn't dream. I was like, it's been a while since I'd seen it, and I kind of forgot this is how it started. And I'm like, I don't watch like Drag Race, but I've seen bits of it. And I'm like, why does this kind of remind me of that? I think it's I think seventeenth century drag race. It is seventeenth century drag race, and he it would is. have gotten full points and won that week's challenge. And because there was a period of time where I was all in on drag race, so I'd, I'd watch it religiously. Now I think too much money's gone into it, so I'm like. I like it when they had to make their own costumes and yeah. it was a bit more scrappy and everyone wasn't, and the personalities were a bit more, well, not honest, but a little bit more raw. Um, yeah. But yeah, this looks like RuPaul's Drag Race and he's mm. coming out and he is Venus. He is Venus. He is I Venus. had forgotten that as well. And I'm like, there's definitely symbolism in this. Oh my and I yes. love how it's, you know, with, with this film, it's like, yeah, you have your clear kind of genders, mm. for for example. Mm. Most like, part, yeah. No, but then, you, most but then you, you have you have something like this where it's like, you know what? Fuck your gender politics and shit. This is what we're getting. He is Venus. And he's gonna own being Venus. And everybody's just there watching it. Like this is the weirdest play I've ever seen, but they're loving it. And I just love that it just it starts off in this bizarre way to set the stage is there any better way than seeing king louis the 13th as as Venus. no I, I, <laughs> I, I don't think there is it's this amazingly beautiful thing and you do see um people dressed in drag in the crowd and then you mm. see richelieu uh, still butchering his name and he's kind of like <laughs> the stick in the mud boring ass um mm. but no i mean this is one thing that um de- the devils does is drip in symbolism and it's kind of this oh we're going to join church and state and that's when it's kind of the telling of how pagan transformed into the church and it's just this done mm. really seamlessly really well and you're just looking at this thing going oh my god this is so gaudy it's all over the place it mm. drips in this kind of very naughty sex that um you're being presented with straight away so this is the kind of movie you're gonna get which yeah definitely is um and then it it pres- is. so it's just sort of sitting the scene of this is what you're in for so just hold on because it's gonna mm. get yeah <laughs> It, it is, and it, it does. It gives you this bizarre scene, but then you're sort of getting that the merge of church and state, mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, this couldn't lead anywhere good. No, good. and it and spoiler, it doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> but I think um, we're sort of quickly introduced to like the town of. Um, or the city, whatever mm. you want to call it, of Loudon. Uh, I'm trying to sound more sophisticated than I am, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> My high school French is totally paying off. I know, mine too. I just like everything has to be in the nose. <laughs> mm-hmm. Loudon. Loudon. Uh, Loudon. So we, we get the idea of this town and it's sort of Oliver Reed as a grandeur is kind of like their their leader um but he's a very naughty leader which we find out but you know everybody kind of looks up to him in this town yes. all the women you know drip with um you know sexuality for him and i, I can't say like i feel yeah i get it i get, I get it. it i mean it's oliver reed at his height of being oliver reed he's never more reed than this movie but i do oh. love jumping forward a bit in the movie how every the confession is just a time for women to come up and go mm-hmm. oh, father i have sinned <laughs> I have sinned. I have thought about you in and all the ways. Your thoughts. <laughs> so <laughs> you give me impure thoughts, Father. And he's like, "Well, let's go back in the other uh, room and we'll sort that." We'll, we'll sort that out like for that. you. Yeah. I mean, Randy gets around. That's just probably the probably, yes, the best way to say it. <laughs> yeah, and I guess like if you look at a sort of um, you know real histories, and I guess definitely today, priests have not been known to keep it 
in their pants. No, and this because and it's Benedetta, it's the exact same thing, and it's flaunted just as much as Grandier does. Uh, mm. Grandier is uh, has an arrogance to him that I love because he thinks he's mm. untouchable, which he finds yeah. again. Spoilers does not end well. Um, it does not end well, and he thinks he can do anything he wants because he has God on his he's, side. He's and got God. The town. Yeah. But when you start yeah. sleeping with everyone's daughters and getting them pregnant, mm. you might make some enemies. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah. So I think he gets. Um, so you see, he's sort of having, I guess, an affair mm. with uh, her name was Philippe. I'm pretty yes. sure yeah. she was the daughter of someone in the town. I can't a, think a of a lawyer, a high powered lawyer, or something. It was a high, yeah. yeah, someone in power. She's she. We always see her with like the white makeup face. It's such an interesting choice to do that. Which is yeah. even wow. naked. <laughs> yeah, when they're sort of you know in in the pits of you know having sex, and she's got the white face, mm. like she has it the whole time. And this is the best insight we get into Grandier. His appeal to to the women around mm. and how he actually treats them when she's like i'm in love with you i'm pregnant he's just in in the most grandiose way he can he basically leaves her oh, high he, and dry he pretty much kisses her hand and says and it is over um mm-hmm. he, he literally just goes and then he gives this whole big beautiful soliloquy about how you must bear your christian burden and all this kind of stuff mm. when you're just like going oh that poor girl <laughs> It's just like, yeah. and he's just like, yep, and on to the next one. Who's, who's next? Yeah. <laughs> like it's, you you, you kind of feel like, you know, it's, I guess in his mind, you know, there's always that, uh, and we get a lot of this in Benedetta. Mm. Again, there's so many overlapping oh, themes yeah. which make it such a great, like, double mm. to talk about. Um, there's that suffering, and it's the woman suffering to get closer to God, and he is totally putting that on her but at this end he does suffer for god which is the amazing thing because mm. when i was sort of watching both these movies i was like what is it with catholicism and suffering for your god like you're in an mm. absolute but not just suffering like guilt wise actually being burnt at the stake being tortured um having to that's the woman's fault when she gets pregnant it's mm. um or even they sort of do this with vanessa redgrave's character um because she has a hump and mm. it's kind of her burden to yeah there's this weird thing about catholicism and purity by pain and i mm. don't and it goes into very much into benedetta like there's an mm. absolute line where that is i think it's almost a line where that is said and it's kind of this weird performative thing where i must slap myself i must like yeah. whip myself for penance and mm-hmm. the devil the devils definitely goes the into devil. that devils um it definitely goes into that notion of oh to be a true christian I must suffer. Mm. Like I must go through the torments of pain and everything like that. Mm. And I and I'm just like going, is it worth it? Really? I mean, is it just a? It's me? totally not. No, <laughs> it's just a whole bunch of sad, sad masochists who like to hurt other people and like be yeah. in charge, so they can. Um, it's it's a very weird um thing, but and this kind of weird thing that's trickled down through mainly Catholicism. Um, I'm guessing mm. that just shows how limited in my knowledge I am of religion. Um, but yeah, that What's thing the- by that. Um, trial by fire kind of thing. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. And by the end, uh, Grandier is totally going in on like, no, I'm pure. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go through all this torture. I'm gonna be burnt at the stake, and I'm gonna be pure. And it's like, oh, dude, that isn't worth it. I mean, you're you're kind of an asshole, but it's that's not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. it, it, we sort of see that, like, you know, the other people around him almost have to suffer, and then as this concludes, it's him taking on all that for his ultimate suffering and, and the it's sacrifice that... yeah, yeah i mean it's because yeah. jesus did the same thing i mean yeah exactly really, I mean, it really played it ties, back, it ties to... back to that that yeah jesus died for and... his sins in a horrible way so therefore you will as well yeah and it all goes back to that pain and suffering of jesus mm. and we see that with this movie we mm. see that with benedetta but yeah we sort of you know, this film introduces us to these characters in these very interesting ways. And mm. one of the really, I guess even before I ever saw The Devils, I knew of the film. Yes. I'm pretty sure my first viewing of this, I might have been 30. <gasps> Holy shit. <laughs> but do you know why? I actually, this was, we still had, you know, VHS tapes, yeah. video stores. I rented something. But the cover must have, they put the wrong VHS in the Mm. cover. And I went home with The Devils. And I'm putting it on, I'm like, this isn't what I want. And I watched it and I'm like, I don't know what this is. I feel kind of dirty now. (laughs) 
especially watching that and being so young and not understanding they're not even expecting the devils like you're going oh my god yeah who's this oliver reed man with his mustache and talking in these mm. very short staccated ways um like he's um <laughs> friggin william shatner um and then you've got the whole um vanessa redgrave thing of it yeah. which is this beautiful oh my god who with the red hair is but it's this kind of sad thing of this woman who's obviously being put into a convent because she has a hump and yeah, yeah she's still vanessa redgrave she's one of the most beautiful mm. women to ever exist 100 percent. yes so it's kind of this she's emotionally dead well not dead she but she is so bitter um yeah that when she sees the slightest bit of happiness or kind of wanting mm. to do good she just stamps it out straight away because she can't she, can't. she just can't yeah. deal with it and it's kind of more sad her character is more sad in that respect especially what happens to her yeah or because she it, had a fantasy about a mustache yeah. or a reed. it really is and again like i grew up in going to catholic school mm. and i can't remember if i was still in catholic school when i saw it or if i'd changed because i pretty much abandoned yeah. all that but this movie probably didn't help with my uh uh, yeah. towards the Catholic Church, but beside the point. Well, I mean, um, yeah. as I said before, Phineas <laughs> was going after the Catholic Church. I mean, everyone mm. who is in within that church, except um, the nuns, or even the nuns to a certain extent, because they just decide, oh, we're just going to go along with all of this. We're just going to mm. completely do, we're going to put on a show. Um, mm. But they really sort of go after the institution as the hypocrisy, yeah. the um, political Everything. machinations, the fact that they're really just using mm. witchcraft to control a town. Um, yeah. It brings up a whole other set of issues which probably aren't really up the dark, but the whole machinations of what this town is and um, the mm. town's rights versus the nationwide and what Rishu is trying to do and yeah. Protestant versus, yeah, it's all very... Yeah, healthy. it is, it is. It's, um, I, I believe um, Ken Russell actually said, like, this is his only political film mm. or he's been quoted as saying that and it is mm. it really is and with everything that it does but it's what i find really fascinating is the the convent and the way this thing looks oh. it looks futuristic it in does. 17th century it's so cold and white and and it perfectly sums up just how you feel about i guess religion in a way it just feels so cold and unnatural yes so these with all these things that they're doing but it's it's so uncomfortable when you see it because that's not what it's supposed to look like no because i mean you see richelieu's room and it's this amazingly designed kind of thing where his mm. bed's up on up an, an altar which pretty much tells you everything that richelieu thinks about mm -hmm. sex and when he's having that conversation with um bridget jones's mother uh, which i know is Gemma um Jones she's amazing in this um mm. and he's sort of having the conversation about oh but never thought it doesn't actually say priests can't get married mm. but at the same time it definitely says nuns can't get married because you're already married to God you're a bride of Christ you're a bride right? of Christ so bride it's this Christ kind of God. it's this really yeah. interesting loophole where you've got these nuns who are stuck in this sterile mm. white and uh, uh, Grandier is living in this bohemian yeah. dreamland and I'm like I would totally live in that house mm. so it kind the, of yeah the, the so much design the, speaks to everything yeah and the, the way this sort of covers I guess gender politics mm. is interesting with uh I guess to, to talk about it in black and white terms and I know that gender is far from being black and white mm. but in the context of this film it blurs those lines completely with how it begins but then it clearly places the women in this one section the men in the other section and it is like they're different species in a way because men can do what they want women have to be this. if way. women if women if these nuns start having sexual desires there it's witchcraft yes and I feel like the more that this kind of comes up, witchcraft was so there as, as a to persecute anyone who didn't believe in like God, was sexually promiscuous, were lesbians or bisexual, anything. This is just, it's witchcraft. Yes, anything and we don't understand, it, witchcraft. It sums it up so perfectly in this because it's clearly got to be this. And, yes. You know, they they do, they set up this plan because they don't want Grandier there. They want to take over Loudon. They want the, the, um, 
<laughs> the, the the non-separation of church and state they want to bring that together they want to bring down the walls of jericho that's what yeah. i just love about the devils um mm. all the symbolism is so on the nose that when you're watching it like bringing down the walls yeah bringing down the walls mm-hmm. of jericho um it's it's this it's the very fact that when vanessa redgrave is because she their priest has died. Their confessor has died. So she's thinking, oh, yes. I get to have Grandier as my confessor. I get to go up and say, I have I'm impure thoughts about you now. Mm. And then she finds out she gets Mignon, who is the weasel of a human being. Oh, Mignon is... Oh, don't you just want to punch him in his bowl hair face? You really do. And I would have the exact <laughs> same reaction to Vanessa Redgrave where I would oh, yeah. just say, look, I want a Grandier. I've been, he's been haunting my dreams. I need mm. that hairy chested man and then they go well he's been haunting you and because that is the language she understands she's just like well yes Mm. he has been possessing me because i have been fantasizing him as about as jesus and Mm. all this kind of actually i can see why this makes catholics very uncomfortable if you have a very heightened sexual um uh oliver reed walking on water wearing gold with that mustache i can see how a lot of catholics would have gone oh no 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 this is making me feel things i'm not allowed to um yeah (laughs) it's it's very it does it sexualizes this image of jesus on the cross especially which again with with playing him yeah yeah and we get that with Benedetta as well. Yes. More, more literally, she's we're seeing the Jesus, yes. whereas here it's Oliver Reed. But the visions she has, it's clearly this repression that she has and she's got this man that she Lust, finds attractive she's and she's lusting. lusting for. And, again, this even speaks to how anybody with a, a disability is treated, mm. where we see her. She's Yeah, she is sort of like the mother superior there but she is the one that gets persecuted the most she really does and she suffers the most just because she's got the sort of like you know hunched over and you know it's almost like the way they show you the bars in this pri- mm. it's like a prison it really is yeah and that that, that just says so much as well and yeah the vision she has like on the cross and she's licking the wounds and yeah Yeah, yeah. i get it it's very (laughs) blasphemous it's insanely blasphemous and insanely sexy in a way so i get you it's like watching the because i used to work with this uh, woman who was very nice but very very catholic and of course as she got oh because you like horror movies and i go yes have you ever seen the exorcist i went Oh yeah, you should never you never watch that movie ever because the things that it's doing, <laughs> like in The Devils, are gonna make you. It's gonna put images mm. in your head that you don't want. And but she was just she'd always heard about this movie, and because mm. she's so Catholic, she doesn't want to go near it. But she kind of wants to know. And I'm just like, mm. oh yeah, no, you should never watch this movie. Um, you, you're you're too innocent. And if you ever watch The Exorcist, which is about an evil that mm. you believe in, I mm. think you may have a stroke. <laughs> Yeah. And it's it's weird, like, my dad is not really religious, yeah. but he told me he saw the exorcist in his little town in Italy with his friend, the priest. <laughs> I'm like, well, if anything happened, at least he could have given you an exorcism. He could have you the Hail Mary, you have a good find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's bizarre. That is the okay. best way to actually kind of see the exorcist. It is. Just be there with your priest. Just be there with your priest. It's fine. Um, mm. no, yeah, so I think you, when you're watching it, you realise how blasphemous that you're watching. Mm. But because I just never grew up in a religious household, school, whatever, I just watch it and go, oh, yeah, it's all over it. Yeah, okay. Mm. But where they're looking at his wounds, I mean, I yeah. personally, it's not my thing, but I'm not going to kink shame. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but no, I love Vanessa Redgrave's entrance in this because all the nuns are trying to see Grandier as he's processing past and she mm. walks in she's completely framed by the camera and all you can see is her head sort of tilted to the side yeah and she's telling the nuns off in this very calm way and then the next thing she does is she goes in to get a glimpse of him because all i've heard is about this there's a sexy priest with a mustache mm. who Mustached um Oliver. yes who <laughs> is very very sexy and they're curious but yeah these women are kept away and then used and exploited for the powers that be own kind of thing because they fully well know that Vanessa Redgrave is not possessed. They fully well know Grandier is not performing witchcraft, which I think is the interesting about the movie. They know it's bullshit, but they're doing it mm. because it serves because it serves a certain purpose. It, it serves their purpose. Yeah. So they pretty much to use modern terms, they're gaslighting everybody. Yes. Into believing something that's not there and yeah. to a point the brainwashing it's almost like she believes it mm-hmm. they they all start to believe it it's 
it does create this weird mass hysteria because they they want Grandia out and what his downfall ends up being it's not getting Philippe pregnant and just dumping her mm. he falls for Madeline who was played by Gemma Jones mm. and she said Bridget Jones's mum and yes. I'm like duh she totally was I, I love it it's ruined it a little bit because I'm like you're Bridget you're gonna grow up to be Bridget Jones mum I I <laughs> totally forgot that was her and I'm like hmm and now, yeah, I'm like, the click. Well, but- Gemma Jones has had a long storied career. She's not just Bridget Jones' mum, but to mm-hmm. me, she's Bridget Jones' mum. <laughs> she's so iconic in that role, too. Yes. But their, um, their thing, like, with with uh, Madeline, Mad- Mad- Madeline, I don't know mm. how you say it, um, and Grandeur, it's like her mother is dying of the plague. Mm. Um, he goes in to help because there's the other guys who are doing bizarre, stupid, whatever, I don't even know. And yeah, the poor an woman is involved. just... <laughs> there was an alligator. Like, she's lying on an alligator. He then, like, attacks them with one. Like, oh, where else are you going to see Before that? I saw this movie, I did hear someone say, yes, you will see Oliver Reed fight someone with an alligator. And I just went, how does that work? And then you watch it and like, oh, wait, Oliver Reed is actually that's, fighting someone with an alligator. That's how that works. That's, 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 <laughs> that's something that's in the movie. It's something that is in a movie. <laughs> It is, it's there and doesn't feel out of place. No. But, like, yeah, that's how he meets her. Mm. And I feel like there must have been some kind of, I don't know, attraction or something where, you know, they're dealing with the bodies because this, again, both movies have the plague. Like, the, the plague. And, you know, they're getting, they're burning the bodies and there's the moment between them two as, just, you know, her mother's body's probably burning. And it's not that you expect this to happen but it to me in a way it's almost like her innocence is what has drawn him in yes because he's not used to that and she's not used to and she's kind of holding Mm. him off a little bit which is the very typical Mm. kind of pure woman kind of thing but she constantly challenges him intellectually she's like okay so uh let's have a conversation about why you actually can have sex or can actually Mm. get married before i even commit to this thing i'm i'm gonna toy Mm. with you a little bit i'm just as smart as you are um and we can actually have a conversation which you've been obviously picking young teenage you've been picking you've been Mm. sleeping with teenagers and teaching them Latin. So there's not a intellectual kind of level there, but mm. he meets um, uh, Madeline and all of a sudden he's like, oh, I can have a conversation with this woman. I can actually, she's going to get me. And so, yeah, he kind of essentially marries himself, which is, you know, if you can, mm. you might as well. <laughs> yeah, and that ultimately becomes his undoing yes. because it is their secret wedding is seen. Mm. And when they, what are they really... Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think they involve um, Vanessa Redgrave in this plot by mentioning all of this. Yeah. And... Because you got to remember, Oliver Reed or Grandier never met Vanessa Redgrave. He is just, mm. he's just heard about this nun who is spouting this stuff about him. Um, mm. Madeline's met her and she just gets pretty much attacked because, though I mm. do love the moment when she is being tortured in front of a crowd, suddenly... Oliver Reed and Madeleine shown up and Madeleine stands up for him saying, no, we are married. We're mar- married under the eyes mm. of God. This is an actual union. This is who we are. And then just out of a fit of jealousy, Vanessa Redgrave just starts screaming about possession because she's just mm. like, the man I want, I can never have. And he's never going to see me like he does her. Mm. And I love how Vanessa Redgrave plays it. She never seems like awful or manipulative. She just seems lonely. And I yeah. you understand why she's doing this. And even though it's making your situation worse and she's being tortured more because of it. But the fact, again, that self flagellation thing, she thinks she deserves mm. it because yeah. So it's, um, yeah, yeah it's, it, it's fascinating. It, yeah. It's so tied into so many things. Mm especially what you see within the Catholic Church mm-hmm. with that, that the guilt, the self-torture, yes. that you, be, you deserve this, you yeah. have to suffer for everything. And it just goes from one extreme to the other that these characters are clearly being brainwashed and, you know, she's lived obviously this very sheltered life. She doesn't understand her own desires, nope. her sexuality. Mm. It, it, it is so destructive that it – and it, you see it with her in in such a way, but with all the other nuns, they are feeling 
things in different ways. Like when they have that just mass hysteria, which is so brought on by all the men around them. Yeah, I mean, they're about to be shot with crossbows. They're in a yeah. pit. They're kind of thinged mm. up. He's based, and they're and they're play acting. I mean, Barre and what's his name fully know they're not going to execute them, but they just yeah. want them to they admit. Are fucking with them to they just get them to say it to say he has been possessing me as well that's all yeah. they're doing so it's under death threat of death and there was an i have a because i've been listening to a podcast about uh mormonism and so every single time joseph smith's in the thing he's like i ever in a trouble he's like i've just had a revelation um and yeah he does <laughs> we will not kill the nuns but they need to you know confess their sins um, yeah. which basically leads them to all them pulling off their habits because they now know they need to perform for everyone and you've just got mm. this mass orgy and enemas and everything just kind of happening it's in this one room. Up. And it's insane. Like this is what you hear, this is what people sort of say about the devils is the naked nuns. I mean, they are fully just mm. throwing themselves over people. They're oh, it's, it's, it's insane. insane. Yeah. It's, and you see the difference between everything. Mm. It's like uh, Vanessa Redgrave's sister, Jean, she gets the enema. Everyone else is in an orgy yes. in the same room. Yes. And this is how this is. they treat her so differently. Mm. And these women are in such hysterics of everything they're going through. And th th this is almost like they're saying just unleash what is inside you. Yes. And a lot of this was heavily edited because they do pull down during this whole blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, forget about giving poor Sister Jean, like, the enema and all that. It's like, no, we need to cut out where they take down the statue of a crucified Jesus yes. and hump it. Yes. It's not, if you see the, uh, the, that uncut scene, it's not, for me anyway, it's not overtly graphic. They're just kind of dry humping this statue, but it's the symbolism of it that, and in for me, it is like, a representation of them in a way taking back the power that they've lost yes by being in this convent in the way that they have been treated and also that that's the representation it's not the vaginas on jesus <laughs> yes though i can get see getting a, a, someone watching that and going well we can't have vaginas on jesus that is just not mm -hmm. on but no it's also um that they're getting attention because these women have been mm. closed away kind of forgotten they don't want to deal exactly. with anything and all of a sudden they're being paid attention to and they're getting this feedback of like oh if you act like this mm. you'll get more attention so yeah they're gonna dry hump a statue because i still have not got full cut so there's obviously parts i'm missing i remember a whole bunch of other crazy things but that's the way yeah. they decided to cut out. Um, yeah, it's like, yeah. no, you can't see them humping Jesus. No. Okay, it's a statue, it's, but all right. Whatever. Um, well, I, I know we've got the, the nun with the, she's basically pulling off the big candle. Yes. You know, you've got all sorts of, it's like. The nun burning the pages of the Bible and all that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, just. Yeah. It's so, it's insanely blasphemous. It's ins yes. But at the same time kind of what's going to happen when all these things play into it yes. and that is i think that is what makes ken russell so interesting he can pull off so much with these insane visuals and what he's saying it's just it is such a it, it's such a you know what's the right word i'm looking for it is really scathing it's a scathing attack it's a scathing attack because on these, these yeah. representations in the church yes because all he's yeah. sort of saying is this is not a sustainable system this is a corrupt mm -hmm. system this is happening is because people who in power want certain things to happen so they're just using witchcraft mm. as an excuse even though everyone fully knows well that there is no witchcraft i mean it differs mm. when we get into bernadetta i think it's slightly different i think there are definitely mm. people um and there are different kind of reasons that go into it mm. and everything like that still as performative but mm. i think ken russell's just really going no this is a corrupt system this should not be how the system should work the, the manipulation should not exist on this level yet it does it still does and it will still continue to but it's just you're yeah it's i i wish this movie was more readily available but at the same time mm. i kind of understand why the catholic church just looked at this or just heard about it and just went yeah no <laughs> mm. because it is it, it it pretty much it breaks it down in such a way it's like why do we have institutions yes like this yes that's pretty much are trying to tell you how to live your life 
while they're doing the complete opposite. Exactly. And also because every single so, yeah. time you see um, Madeline and Grandier, they are out in the nature. They are kind mm. of babes in the woods. They are these innocents. And even when sort of Grandier gives himself over to the fact that he is will mm. be tortured and killed and probably burnt at the stake, um, mm. he will not give them what they want, which is a confession of, oh, I am a witch. Mm. You're completely right. He refuses to do it. Um, again, that is that same answer. Why do we have these institutions in the first place? It would just be better if we just let people live their lives in the way that they choose, not being in a system where it can be easily mm. manipulated. And yeah, and I kind of love the scene when the king comes in to see what's kind of happening, and he knows his bollocks. Like, he even mm. kind of tricks Barre into looking at this ancient thing and it has nothing and it apparently cured yeah. a nun and he's like but there's nothing in the dipshit <laughs> yeah and it's again it's when you're in that frenzy mo- you know that frenzy that hysteria mm. that they're like oh I'm suddenly cured it's like no you're not mm. ah no. it's like they're doing they're puppets yeah. doing what they're told for entertainment and yeah. that really is reflective of how it feels you know religion can be instead of maybe being something so basic where it's like why don't you just live your life to be a good person yes. don't hurt others instead there's every little thing don't do this don't do that if you do this just remember da, 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 da. and it's like you know what this is way too much and this is why people kind of go a little bit uh, blah, 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 yes and get sexually repressed yeah. and then it all just knows. comes out in weird ways mm. It does. Uh, yeah. Um, which is, yeah, because when you do get to Grandier's torture scenes, which do last mm. a long time, I was, like, I was like, oh, yeah, you, you're watching Oliver Reed be tortured for a mm. long, long time. It's kind of stripped back and it's a lot more intentful. It's like they're in private. They don't have to show anyone, so they can pretty much mm. do what they want to him. And he's just yeah. lying in a fetal position going, they've broken his legs, they've done all those kind of things mm. to him. And it's kind of like oh yeah no one's watching now so we can just do whatever we Mm. want and you're not it because you're not performing you need to perform in a certain Mm. way so you can go out in this thing in glory and he's like no (laughs) Mm. for a shit of a person as grandier is he has this and he both him and vanessa redgrave are the more interesting characters in the film and that's by design Mm. yeah definitely they have their they have their flaws, but they are the most interesting mm. characters. And as you see, he's getting tortured. He's not giving he's not giving an inch. He knows he he can be a piece of shit, mm. but at the same time, he's almost like what these guys are doing is even worse. Yes, and you can debate about right or wrong, whatever. But the fact and the performance he gives this is. This is one of the best performances I've ever seen. Look, Oliver Reed has given some amazing performances in his career, drunk and sober. Mm. But Mm. um, this is when he's in that final thing and it's just him suffering in agony. It's amazing. He is incredible. Like, through the whole film, he is incredible. Like, I think he may have said this could have been his favourite performance he's done. I think I've heard him him, him say that, yeah. Yeah. And you can see it. Like, he's phenomenal and so is Vanessa Redgrave and it's just like I again it boggles my mind that there are these insane performances that you feel these characters even if you don't want to yeah and it it broke my heart a bit to read that Vanessa Redgrave when filming I believe she actually suffered a miscarriage at the time and that just makes her performance so much more impactful knowing that she was really suffering Mm. with that and it's absolutely like it's horrible and especially I'm like f- how did she do this movie going through that and My also God. it's such a physical role I mean yeah. for a lot of the movie except for the first bit where she's actually sort of speaking and she's talking you get every sense of her personality by the end of the film she's a sopping physical mess I mean she mm. all she's been doing is like twisted around kind of thing mm. all she can do is kind of scream cry and then being twisted into these very painful I'm guessing this would have been a pain she's got the prosthetic of the hump or whatever mm. done. I don't know they're probably just stuffed things in there yeah Uh, but she still has that to contend with which Mm. is a performance and then you've added that on top of it it's i'm like oh my god like it's not like you're sitting down delivering dialogue you're actually having to do things yeah Yeah. and just wow yeah in just completely just how did they pull this movie off i don't know i think it's everything just came oh. together i think because you can see redgrave and reed relishing this role even also Gemma jones who's playing the much more 
she's probably mm. the only innocent in this whole thing because I think the movie ends on her. Yeah, walking through this. She, she, she kind of they pretty much like the city gets destroyed yeah. just about, and she just walks away, walks out from the rubble. Yeah. So it's, she's it, yeah. amazing visual. Sorry, oh, cut you off. There. Oh no, I was just gonna say she's kind of the only innocent in this. Mm. Everyone else has very multiple kind of layers of mm. yeah. I mean, no one is completely innocent except for Madeline, who just mm. happened to fall in love with Oliver Reed. And to be honest, yeah. you can't blame her. <laughs> yeah, you can't blame anybody. No, you really can't. <laughs> yeah, and it's just the the whole film though. It's just it's a fever dream, and you. And never the same afterwards. Oh my I god! Think it, I, it's, yeah, I remember the yeah. first time I watched this. I was really tired. I got to see it at the Asta this year, so I only just recently oh, wow. saw this movie because I'm like, why? I found a dodgy DVD of it. Um, but I'm like, why can't I see this movie? Finally sat down, and I was just tired. Going, what? What is that? What? Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> even when you hear about it, you still can't believe what you're yeah, doing a lot of the times on screen. Quite prepare you. No, yeah. Nothing can prepare you for the devils. You just sort of you just have to kind of experience it and then on further watches you can kind of finally go, Oh, I understand the mechanics a little bit more, but you're just thrown images at you where you don't quite know what to do with them. Yeah. Then one of the other big sort of uh scenes that was edited out but you can um you can see all the uh what was deleted and stuff Mm -hmm. it is online i believe like the very controversial scenes were actually shown for the first time i think it was in the 2000s -hmm. on british tv on a documentary about the devils with ken russell Mm -hmm. and they showed the scenes uncut um which i thought was fascinating but this is how you get to see these scenes at least i know the bfi um has a dvd which i kind of well anyway the reason why i don't have a region free player is very multi invested but i do mm. know it has a doc a commentary with mark commode who's a big mm. proponent of getting this film seen mm. and also ken russell and it'd be fascinating to listen to why the decision he got made made to watch it but yeah like, like the- warner brothers don't want yeah. a bar of no. releasing and i'm like mate this movie needs to be uncut on 4k it really does Seriously. it's a it beautiful look good movie amazing. i mean it's an ugly movie but at the same time it's a beautiful Ugh. movie if that makes yeah. sense it is a beautiful ugly movie yes <laughs> but yeah um go back to it like grandier after everything he is burnt alive mm. And, you know, as the, I, I, th- I can't remember the character that w- they said he's going to hang him instead of him suffering mm. the burning, but he doesn't end up doing it. And you do see the walls of what everybody's thinking collapse because they know he's not, you know, he's getting burnt for things he didn't do. Oh, yeah. And you feel whole- that so much as this happens, right? Yeah, it's the, the kind of a way to his body has literally mm. died before they start pulling down the walls it's it's just yeah. a literal we just want to pull these walls down and this one local politician won't let us do it how do we get mm. rid of them which mm. um is kind of a factor in how politics work it's which mm. is this very sl- one of the many sleazy sides of it is like mm. this is one person who's standing in our way how do we move around him or how do we just get rid of them yeah um and it, this is what it is and in 17th century france they would yeah. burn you at the stake apparently yeah I'm, I'm surprised this doesn't happen today with people's bizarre beliefs but yes. anyway yes um yeah and you this this scene just i feel like it's just so powerful and they did edit a significant amount mm. of it but he i uh, can't remember the character but he gives Sister Jean, a very phallic looking, I think, femur bone mm. from, of of Grandiose Ikea. Mm. And it's almost a fuck you to her. Like you were used mm. so we could end him. Yeah. And she finally has a piece of the man she could never have. And she has sex with it, mm. which we don't see in oh, the edited no, version. No, this see? really proves I've never seen, I've only seen the edited version because I would have remembered Vanessa Rupert having sex with a bone. <laughs> yeah, well, you pretty much, you, you see it, it's yeah. very phallic, and then you kind of see what she's going to do with it. Yeah. And it, it's it's so sad and so just, Even- it, it is such a fuck you, but also she gets the one thing she could never have. Which is Grandier. It's kind of yeah. this very, it's kind of, and that's why it's so powerful. It's, and the fact they removed oh, that, and it's not that graphic. Like, no. 
just the implication of that and the fact that mm. it means um uh oh god I can't remember the term for it because we did talk about it quite a lot in uh, Neon Demon. Um, you have sex with a corpse, basically. It's yeah, ne- 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 necro something. Um, necrophilia. necrophilia. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> Trying to get to the word. <laughs> this is how hard it is. Um, yes, <laughs> it, it does. It is an implication of necrophilia. But you're right. She's mm. finally got a piece of this man that she could never ever have mm. because he would have he would have rejected her wholesale. He would have just looked at her and gone, yeah, mm. no. Like, and it's just kind of this very sort of sad thing. And I kind of wish I really would love to see the uncut version of this purely to get that kind of whole kind of thing. And it's all yeah. it's all the kind of inanimate objects having sex kind of thing, which is kind of mm. weird, which when we get into Benedetta, that is what that movie is about. Mm. Well, it's a big, po- well, it is a big portion of the plot that catalysts something. Um, yeah. And, and Benedetta was like, oh, so you've got kind of an implied, you know, masturbation with a femur bone. Yeah. Hold my beer. <laughs> Let me show you. Because there ain't no implying it this time. No, it's, it's the Virgin Mary, isn't it? And Benedetta. Mm. Yeah, it's not Jesus. It's, it's the Virgin Mary statue that does yeah. it. Gets, gets uh, carved into something. Which I, I knew from the second I saw that statue, I'm like, I know what's going to happen. I did. And it did. <laughs> I was like, I was slightly taken aback. I'm like, they made a dildo out of virgin. Okay, then the well, we yep. go home in territory. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, woo. But yeah, like um, I think we'll wrap up on the devils and get to yep. Benedetta. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think yeah, we've pretty much done a very deep dive. We've done a very deep the dive. The It's but on the devils, but it's an amazing movie. It, mm. It's just every time. Well, the second time I've watched it, um, I I love it even more because I think I love how the symbolism is so goddamn blunt. It's just like, yep, this is exactly really is. what this is. I'm yeah. not playing around. Unlike it's, Vendetta, which is going to play around a little bit. <laughs> it does. And I, th- I just think The Devils is phenomenal. Mm. And, um, yes, uh, kind of on all the podcasts I do when we talk about films, I like to give a rating um, out of five. Mm. And for me, you know what? I'm giving it five out of five very sexy Oliver Reeds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving it four and a half uh, Vanessa Redgrave humps. <laughs> <laughs> My humps. My humps, uh, my lovely lady mm-hmm. lumps. <laughs> but yeah, we'll we'll get into Benedetta, yes. which is uh, what a movie. Benedetta, viens à moi. J'arrive, Seigneur. J'arrive. On ne comprend pas toujours les instruments de Dieu. Prenez-moi. Oh, Un couvent n'est pas un lieu de charité, cher enfant. Dieu te parlera dans beaucoup de langues. Ça va m'effrayer. Benedetta, viens à moi. Oh, quelle douleur. Jésus-Christ a choisi notre bienheureuse sœur. Benedetta. Santa Benedetta. Benedetta. From doing all my little bits of research, Mm. Uh, so Benedetta, I believe, was written by David Burke and Paul Verhoeven, Mm. and Pascal Bonitzer uh, has a screenplay collaboration Mm -hmm. credit. Uh, It was based on the nonfiction book Immodest Acts, The Life of a Lesbian Nun in Renaissance Italy by Judith C. Brown. Yes. And as mentioned, directed by Paul Verhoeven. Mm. And it stars, uh, I'm going to get all these names wrong, so <laughs> bear with me. Uh, I'm not sure how to say the main actress's name. I think it's Virginie Effera, maybe? Yeah, something like that. It's, it's as, yeah. uh, ben, as Benedetta. Mm-hmm. Charlotte Tramplin. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is Sister Felicita. Mm-hmm. Daph- Daphne Patakia as Bartolomé. Mm-hmm. Lambert Wilson, he's, uh, blah, 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 I can't think of the guy's name, um, Alfonso the, uh, is he, got a, is he like the Pope's, he's Pope's, like a Pope type character. He's like the Pope's envoy, it's is. Is like, the Pope can yeah. be here, but I am to give the Pope's. I'm trying to get all the character names, it's like names and things, yeah. um, 
there, there's like two Alfonso characters. Yeah. O- o- Oliver Rabberdin is also an Alfonso mm. character. Um, and then we've got Louise Chevillot uh, as Sister Christina. And I'm just going to stop there because I can't say names. And <laughs> um, this film really focuses on just mainly these characters mm. as it is. Um, and the synopsis, which, again, we're in 17th century here. A nun in Italy suffers from disturbing religious and erotic visions. She is assisted by a companion and the relationship between the two women develops into a romantic love affair. Again, that's very basic. There is a lot to unpack with Benedetta. So much with Benedetta. Um, I don't quite know where to begin. Um... Neither do I. Uh... (laughs) Uh, do you, I guess, do you think that she um, believes her own bullshit, Benedetta? I, I think Benedetta does, I think, believe in her own bullshit. And I yeah. feel like she was raised to believe her own bullshit. Yes. And that's what we get at the start. When we see a young Benedetta, I'm, I'm assuming maybe she's like eight or nine. Yeah, she's very, t- yeah, something like that. Ten, maybe, I don't know, maybe ten. Ten, yeah. she's, 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 she's prepubescent, yeah. Yeah, yeah so... We sort of get this little backstory and they believe that she was a miracle child and miracles happen around her. Like, I think some bandits try to steal off the family and she just starts yelling at them and then a bird shits on the guy and they're like, you know what, we'll just give the necklace back. And as we find out, she's been... Uh, because she's such a miracle, apparently she needs to be uh, a child of God or something. Mm. And basically is uh, they pay the convent to take on Benedetta. Which is what you did in the day. You couldn't just rock up to a, mm. um, a nunnery and go, I would like to be a nun. But yeah. Go, yes, but someone needs to sponsor you and pay the bill. Yeah. You can't and just be is, walking in and doing a nun thing. This is what just, this is what I love that it's just, it's so on the nose. It's like, you know, you do, when, when you are like a, a nun or a priest, I believe you got to take the vows of like uh, poverty. You got to live in poverty. You can't have ownership nope. of things and da 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 da. But we'll take your money. Oh, I know. There's even this great always. line. There's always a great line from Charlotte Rampling saying, which is a very anti-Semitic thing to say, but this is mm. 17th century Italy, so it is very anti-Semitic. Um, there's mm. a very poor nun who used to be who was born into the Jewish faith, and now she feels she has to self-harm herself. To we'll get mm. into that. But Re- Charlotte Rampling says, "Don't." You don't negotiate like a Jew. And that yeah. speaks so much to how they see themselves, but the fact that they're negotiating a payment yeah. to get... They're so righteous, but then they just insult yes. other people. It's like, you're taking money yes. to have someone stay with you. Yes. You're going to torture anyway. Yes. Like, and and it really, it, this film is like, it, from the beginning, it shows you just how shit this is, it is. It's yes. like, we want money... For because we're in power. Well, the monasteries and, and things were actually where the wealth was. They mm. were very these wealthy institutions. They had a, a lot of the mm. academics were. This is a lot of where the artists were um, until they were patroned otherwise. But they often would belong within the church. This was a very wealthy, mm. especially in Italy, because this is next to the mm. Pope. Um, yeah. This is a very wealthy um, institution. So I kind of love how, like. This is what I love about Verhoeven. I mean, he's a Jesus scholar. He's not so much, I don't think he's a man who, if he does, he has his own private faith, but he's always kind of wanting to, he's a very academic about this. As you were saying before mm. we recorded, Robocop is the American Jesus, mm. and this is kind of the Italian sexy time Jesus. Yeah, this um, is like female 17th century yeah. Renaissance Jesus. Yes. And like, yeah, Verhoeven, you can see those themes with a lot. Mm. He always puts in, like, you could look, again, we've discussed Showgirls on your show, and yes. I recommend everybody go listen to that. It's fantastic. Um, but it, even in something like that, there's so much symbolism. He adds in so much on on different levels, and he really is taking shots here. Oh, He's he like, is. the church wants money, you can't do this and that, but they make you live like this. They're going to, you know, get pissy if you do anything. It's like, mm. but what really, I just thought, you know what, this is probably a movie where um, Benedetta is probably, you know, very sexually repressed. She probably has to struggle with feeling like, 
uh, you know, discovering her real sexuality, mm. but it's so much more than any it's of it. It's not, she's not even repressed. I would say uh, Vanessa Redgrave, absolutely. She's repressed, mm. she's been locked away, doesn't want to be seen because no one wants to see her in society. Mm. Um, Benedetta sees herself in kind of her element in the nunnery. She isn't being repressed in any way, shape or form. She's mm. still acting in the passion kind of plays, which is like religious plays back in the day. And she's having full on fantasies of Jesus with a flock of sheep. I, God, I'd love these fantasies so much. Oh my God, aren't they <laughs> insane? I did not expect, I thought visions, okay. But no, they're full, on, they're full on romance fantasies. They, Jesus yes. is the guy on the cover of a romance novel. This is what yeah. he is. And it's... You contrast it with the devils, it's so different <laughs> with those visions. It's almost with Jesus. very innocent. Like, yeah. I was sort of thinking it's when she really has a relationship with Bartolome. Bar- I'm sorry, I'm butchering her name. Um, Bartolome? Ba- Bartolome. I, I can't say it. <laughs> yeah. Her girlfriend um, yes. is when her visions start becoming more visceral because she's kind of yes. understanding what sex is. Yeah, it's it's not so much that there's the repression. I, it's like discovering. Awakening. Yeah, it's discovering sex and your sexuality within the construct of a convent. Mm-hmm. So we get that she, um, you know, she, in I think feel like these visions of Jesus in this romanticized. It's like what almost she's meant to be thinking. Yes. But then she meets Bartolomeo and straight away there's an attraction. She wants to help this this woman escape from mm. her dickhead dad. And when she's washing her and she kind of touches her naked and she feels something, mm. like she she doesn't necessarily, I don't think she necessarily feels it's wrong. No, she never. But she's feeling really like this is different and yeah. maybe... I, I think the the Jesus thing was almost like trying to overcompensate these feelings she had towards women. Yes, I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, because, but at the same time, she's attracted to Bartimola. Uh, Bart, mm. Let's just call her Barty. Um, Barty. <laughs> Barty. She's attracted to Barty um, because she realises Barty, which fully has been abused by her whole entire male mm. family. This isn't like, oh, she's, but in Benedetta's eyes, she's had experience with men. She knows what sex is. And I think mm. that's kind of one of the reasons why she's attracted to her in the first yeah. place, which is this really weird dichotomy of, oh, you actually know what sex is. I mean, well, it's more probably rape in her case. And she even mm. sort of says it very nonchalantly. Yeah, I was just raped by my family. What are you going to do yeah. about it? What are you going to do about it? I'm here now. It's all good. But yeah. Benedetta's kind of fascinated with that because she's always mm. had this very ethereal very schoolgirl kind of esque kind of fantasy of what it would like to be in love and to have sex. Mm. Um, I, I love the one with Jesus just like decapitating people left, right, and center. Um, yes, I, know, it was. <laughs> I can't imagine Jesus doing that like eh, ever. But but if you're a young woman who's fantasizing mm. about this man who you're meant to be married to, yeah, you're fully f- he's yeah. leaving you and he's decapitating and, and she because and it's he's, he's decapitating yeah. people but the way she she talks it's like she takes the whole thing very literally she does that Even, she is a bride of christ she says that to her mother she's like yeah i just saw christ and her mother's like what are you talking about she's like well i'm his wife i'm his I, wife right I, hello. I, hello i get to say hello i get to see him like she takes yeah. the idea of being married to christ really seriously so when mm. she does go on these mad visions of like plague and pestilence she mm. and she even says at the end i mean this movie can be so subtle and blurry and then you'll just get a line like at the end she says mm. christ would not let that happen to me i am mm. chosen by god like i am so it's very different yeah i would never call bernadetta repressed i think she's just discovering something it's more else. of a discovery yeah. than repression yes i think it's a better way to exactly kind of yeah yeah although it is, can be because these movies can blur as well they can there's so much in common which is crazy yeah like yeah there's nuns it's 17th century there's a play yes but there's different views of sex and sexuality and visions of jesus mm. and Visions of grandeur, mm. to use the name, yes, with the thing. But Benedetta really thinks like she's something special, and it really makes you question in this film as it goes on, as you see the relationship with Barty mm. and everyone around her. This very kind of love hate relationship mm. with um, Sister Felicita, yes, 
Um, Charlotte Rampling is fucking phenomenal. Oh I my loved her. God. In this. Oh it, my god! You just—I mean, she used to. You always think she used to play this one role, and then you go back, mm. and then you watch something like The Night Porter or this, and you're like, "Oh no, that woman has teeth!" Like she will. Oh. Yeah, it's such and just the way that she uh, is. All, I need to watch this movie again, but maybe is almost in love with Benedetta, but more wants to believe in her. She's desperate for this to be true. She she's she comes across as doubting things. But at the same time, but she still accepts it. Yeah, like I think she actually really. I think she knows that it's bullshit. Because the whole thing is that yeah. Benedetta will just walk in and go, "Hey, I have the stigmata," and she's just bleeding from her forehead and her feet and mm. her hands. And everyone's like, "Well, you have got a piece of glass and cut yourself." She's like, "No, no, no, it's, it's divine's Christ like that." And you can see um, Rampling really questioning it, but at the same time, she's like, "But what if it's true?" I mean, this would mean every this thing I've had to dedicate my life to um, is actually true, and she's the chosen one. She even says, um, "God doesn't talk to me like He does to you," and it's this really sad moment of, um, "Yeah, I never, I never got what you got. You've got something special." Yeah. Even though, like, she's the when she gets closer to death, she's like, "Actually, I want to believe this wholeheartedly. I want to believe that Benedetta has a phone line to God, um, mm. when none of us have. We're just sitting here, just praying and getting radio silence, and here's this woman coming in, going, "Nope, I'm the chosen one." <laughs> and it's still incredibly ambiguous yeah. as to whether, because it doesn't say no. specifically if she's fake or not. Well, it the... makes you question it. Then... It gives you everything yes but the thing is it, but it still doesn't show you no it tracks like there's this moment when after Charlotte rampling passes away and she push in the in a she go it's literally in a blaze of glory and you got to applaud her for oh it. my gosh she just walks into that fire like nobody's business i'm like she's gonna no oh no she just walked in like she's like hey. she does the opposite of oliver reed she's <laughs> like i'm going for that fucking fire I'm going out in my blaze of glory. Yeah. Fuck you, I have the plague. Yes, whatever. whatever. <laughs> but there's a moment where she has the plague and she drops this plate and you see it shatter. And then the next time you see it, it's when Benedetta is about to get burnt and Barty finds it and confronts her with it, but you never actually see she, her cut herself. But she And in her dialogue, she admits it but doesn't. Yes. And it's in, I love how it, it makes you question it. It's like, is she for real? But it, it kind of makes you wonder as well, is is Benedetta someone who is suffering from some kind of mental illness that has given her this vision that she is like a Christ figure mm. without her realising that she's doing these things to make it that way? And one of the interesting things is when um, blah, 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 Charlotte Rampling mm -hmm. um, says, look, she doesn't have the the blood on her forehead there's mm. no crown of thorns she's got in her hands yep, her the side mm. and the feet but every other stigmata has had the thorns mm. so sometime later and we see there was some glass or something had shattered yeah and she's got the bleeding but you're like did she do it to herself did she not do it to herself what's happening yeah it's very and you, she plays with Barty about it too. She really does because every single time Barty tries to get a straight answer out of her, she doesn't get one. You see her, she's so close to admitting it like a number of times and then she'll just won't. Like, she'll, she'll turn she'll around be, and be like, I am, I am. Everything Jesus, you've seen. Essentially. Yes, you've seen <laughs> yeah. everything. She's like, I don't know what I'm seeing or I know you. Like Barty's literally saying, I know you. We have, we are in an intimate relationship. I know everything mm. about you can't you just tell me this one thing and she's like nope i am i am jesus and i'm going to walk through the valley and, yeah. and all that kind of thing i'm gonna walk on water I'm gonna and walk on, yes i'm so surprised we didn't get that yeah we had we had the vision of oliver reed walking on water mm. in the devils we even have robocop walking yeah, on water. water i'm like where was benedetta walking on water because that would have been fantastic it would have been and <laughs> But I kind of like how everything that happens is ambiguous. I mean, she can, like, do something to her voice that sounds like she's possessed, but it's a man's voice. So the whole thing is that yeah. Jesus is possessing her. So this isn't like a de de demonic possession. Yeah. It's a Jesus possession, whatever that is. Yeah, it's like the opposite of that. It is like Jesus possessing her, but it's a scary kind of voice. Yeah. And you're like, could she really make her voice like that? And 
but that's what the actual real Benedetta was known yes. for, for just dropping her voice and doing that shit. And it's just kind of so like, mad. it's so insane. So you're just watching her going, oh, I think you, but sometimes you're like, oh, maybe she doesn't believe in her own bullshit. Like the first time she does a stigmata, it mm. is it's the forehead, then it comes back with the forehead. And then, but I'm like, oh no, I think you actually do believe in this. I think you actually she, fully she believe did. that you're Jesus. I mean, the fact that she gets out of, oh my God. Okay, we'll go back to the whole, perf- the performance thing of torture is very much in this movie. Like, oh my God. I mean, it's so much about that. It's about performing for the crowd. And, it is. It, and it, it has and, that. Yeah. And the, the, this and the devils have that as well yeah. in different ways. Yeah. And it's it's so fascinating how much they have in common. But being so different. Yeah, because this was the time of what you would do, because this is sort of set during mm. the Reformation when Luther mm. did the thing to the door of the Catholics and said, you, you guys are all corrupt, I don't like you, mm. and then there was this big war. What the Catholics were actually trying to do was trying to clean up house because they went, mm. oh, crap, we actually have a threat that isn't still, mm. we can't say specifically are heretics because they still believe mm. in God or our God, but Mm. we've got some crazy stuff happening in Catholicism that maybe we should tidy up. And that is Mm. all these um, performative people are having visions because it was taking what, and it was because it was an individualization of of their own religion. Mm. And it wasn't what the central, wasn't what the Pope was saying. Um, So they were trying to take them all out. And Benedict is just like, nope, I am Jesus. I am, I am great. I am pretty much married to this man and it's all going to be amazing. And even toward the end when she's walking back to the city, I'm just like, oh my God, you actually do believe in your bullshit. There's the thing, if you go back, they will put you on that pyre again. You got away from it um, mm. through the most ridiculous set of circumstances because the town, yeah. you were able to perform in a way to the crowd that mm. way that the Pope's dude couldn't. Um, mm. And so for the crowd kind of favored you. But if you go back, there's every single chance you're going to be, it's going to be that situation again. And in mm. fact, she was, yeah, her, her revelations about how the plague was going to take over this town never happened. So she was kind of like stayed at the monastery, but was kind of shunned. It's that amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting because she wanted the, the city closed off. Yeah. Because of the, the, we know that there's the plague. Much like the devils, they, it's about the protecting. Yeah, of the, yeah. Much like in you know the last two years. Oh, didn't that scene when the Pope's guy is coming to visit and he's like, "Oh, you need to be checked by a doctor." He's like, "No." I'm like, "Yeah, wow." I'm like, "Why does this feel so like?" They're like, "You're not coming in." Like seriously, no. No. And they're like, "No, we're coming in," and they brought the plague with them. Yes, they did. But it was. It's not. It, like, I th- feel like Benedetta was smart enough to know that there's a plague. She doesn't want this. She, I feel like she does care oh, yeah. about this town. But she's like, if we let people in, they're going to bring this. And we can't have that. And the second they are, you've got the, um, oh, what's his name? Lambert Wilson's character yeah. has the plague. He mm-hmm. gives it to Charlotte Rampling who left. And then she starts seeing things differently. Like, she expects Benedetta to hate her. But... Mm. That's not Benedetta. Benedetta is such a complex character where she believes, I think, in her own bullshit. Yes. But at the same time, she wants to be who she is, but she still wants to kind of be this good person who does God's work. And that's the complexity of it. And when she says she wants to go pray with um, Charlotte Rampling because she is dying of the plague, Mm -hmm. like it's an important scene and that, you know, gives her the courage to be like, you know what, fuck all of this, and she goes in her own blaze of glory. Yes. But what this film just was not at all what I expected. I thought this was going to be some sleazy nuns having sex with each other all the time. And this is not that movie. This not, is not nun exploitation one hundred and one at all. No, it's not. But the same thing is, you do get those elements. I mean, we, you do. We said yes. There's a dildo carved out of a Virgin Mary, which hey, um, and you do. I knew that was happening. I knew when I saw that statue. I'm like, she's gonna have that in her vagina later. <laughs> See, I didn't, and then she does, and she's very happy about it. But no, it's kind of, um, it's kind of this real relationship. I mean, Benedetta is very selfish because she's more considering the fact of how she wants to be seen, mm. and her relationships do come second. But at the same time, she can be very kind. Say with the nun who she's helping undress, who's kind of in pain but doesn't want to say why she's in pain, and then she goes, "Look, there are a lot of sins that you can actually be absolved of. My father was Jewish. I'm." I'm never going to heaven. Mm. And you see that she's been mm. hacking at her own 
breast. It's yeah, a horrific it's, moment. It's and very it's, horrific it's, because you see that self kind of torture yeah, like that I, they inflict upon themselves because, you know, she was from a Jewish family and yes. she's like, well. No matter know, how much I believe in God, yeah, it's, it's, it's still going to. It's It's, yeah. Um, I'm still going to be seen this way and God is not, and the fact that she still believed mm. after that that God is not going to let her into heaven is just, mm. oh, my, oh. What, what a performance. Like, she's not in it much. No. But her, what she brings to that in such a small role, like, I was floored. You're, yeah, you really are. You love that character. You just want to kind of take that character and go, oh, I need to keep you. You, you feel so yeah. bad for her yeah. with and everything she goes through but, and – Benedetta oh always shows her kindness. It's never – she's never short with her. She's never kind of – I mean, can, she can be short. She manipulates Barty mm. like nobody's business um, to the point where – I think Bar- Bar- Barty manipulates Benedetta. Oh, she does as, as well. I think it's, it is very much thing when that whole thing when they're having the yeah. argument – and yeah. she's saying, well, I don't want to be with you. You're a fraud. And then mm. Benedetta just starts masturbating in front of her. And then you just see Barty going, eh, I'll go with it. Um, but, no, she does mm-hmm. the same thing to to her. It's a very kind of n- not exactly toxic but not a healthy relationship between those it, two women. It's kind of the it, – it, it's so funny how much this – has in common with showgirls. Yeah. Oh. It's it's showgirls in a, in a, in a nunnery. It is. Um, but – you see the the toxic relationship with Crystal and Nomi. Yes. And this is reflective of that in a different way. Mm. But what Verhoeven, and this is massively in Showgirls, mm. is there's a lot of mirroring. And we get that here too. And they even bring up the point. Like, the, um, Barty is like, I don't know that I'm beautiful. I haven't seen my reflection. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, you should. Yeah, because you are And there's, again, this mirroring, she's like, look in my eyes to see the reflection. And then there's a scene where Benedetta grabs, I think, the bedpan to get the reflection oh, to oh, look oh. at her body. And there's a whole look thing. Look at her breasts. And there's a whole thing to, yeah. about breasts in this movie. Um, but it's the, more. The, the nurturing. But it's more there's, the nurturing the, part. I mean, when that statue falls on her as a kid. She, she first, sucks she the breasts the like, the she, <laughs> like she's going to nurture. And then later on we see a woman who's pregnant and she's like well i've started milking and she grabs it out and squirts the milk (laughs) i'm like you go girl yeah you you go Uh, i mean you are showing off that you slept with a priest and have bearing his child and you are full of life you are just anyone walks in that's his baby we don't mm -hmm. look at again it's like it's like they will do what that yeah they will do whatever but again consequences this goes into some interesting gender politics as well because again much like with the devils it's almost like well men can do what they want but a woman does something oh my god but the thing is is that the woman is protected by lambert she feels that mm. she can totally just waltz around with a huge mess of pregnant yeah. stomach and everyone knows that it's his and she feels mm. completely comfortable in her own body to go, yeah, check this out, guys, I'm pregos. Um, there is no shame in what she's doing and all Charlotte Rambling can do is just be very uncomfortable and just go, mm. oh, God, this one but, again. Um, and then it's like, okay, so the priest who's not meant to do this thing. Yes, or whatever, he's not you know, meant to at all. He can do that, but Benedetta and Barty doing anything, oh, my God. Oh, no. Uh, what do you and mean? again, it's like, get fucked. Yes. <laughs> Exactly, it's, but again, it's used as a point of convenience to get Benedetta mm. because she's the one having the visions. Um, they could have let those – if Benedetta wasn't having the visions, wasn't stigmatizing. I think that's a – They wouldn't give a shit. They wouldn't give a shit. If they were having sex or whatever. They were giving I think, whatever, but it's something that they can use against them, and she's, that's kind of the more fascinating – She's the controversial character, much like – um, grandiose is the co- controversial yes. character there so let's take these things and yeah you know let's get you burnt at the stake yes kind of thing. yeah and the you fact know. that she isn't the fact that the town again because it's this performative mm. thing of violence like the um executioner wears red even when he's down in the dungeon torturing mm. body um god that's a hard scene and it's it's absolutely horrible oh. and she did not deserve any of that and she did not want to oh, she be even says, yeah she even says bullshit she, either she, she, did, she even said to um i think yeah to um benedetta i will not suffer for you fuck this mm. i am not gonna um yeah i'm not protecting you in this i um you want to be in that situation that's fine but i'm 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 mm. i'm out so yeah there's the dildo um so it's just there's more convenient thing and even when lambert sort of says to benedetta i'm sorry i'm mixing characters i can't remember his character the pope guy who played yeah who was played by lambert um says 
look, I don't want to burn you at the stake because people are going to get really pissed at me and I mm. don't feel very well. So um, can we just, can you just say that you faked it all? And the next thing she does, boom, bloody hands. It's just mm. this amazing. And you see her like scrunchy skirt or her, her thing and then mm. just go, boom, bloody hands. And then the whole town is just like, in a frenzy she puts the town in a frenzy mm. so they will save her from the stake it's but then when she goes back it's because she believes jesus will save her and it's just i'm like i still don't know where you where you are mentally in terms of if yeah. you believe this or if you don't believe this it's, it's so it's, hard yeah. Yeah. I, I almost feel like um i feel like benedetta had a purpose within herself like at least in the film yes that she didn't want to do bad things she wanted to do good things but she i feel like she believed in her own bullshit that she made up these things to get people on her side so she could yes try and do good because that was the only way she could see how to do it whereas you see the men in the situations could do whatever the fuck they want and i think that's really where it's at and adding in the relationship between the women it is de it's definitely an exploration of um looking at i guess when there's an attraction to the to the same sex mm. if you're a woman you know le you're a lesbian we can be a lesbian mm. whichever i'm getting all my terms blah 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 it's um you know brain fried after watching these two movies but it it's really exploring does. that kind of awakening mm. That you can be attracted to another woman and you can do lots of awesome things. There's, you know, blah, blah, blah. You don't need a penis and a man, blah, blah, blah. Mm. It's almost like she's learning these things as well as all these other things that are happening. And it's almost confusing whether she wants that relationship with Barty or if she really does want to dedicate her life solely to God, which in the end is what she makes her decision to do yes i mean it is kind of yeah you don't know where she is i mean Barty obviously wants to spend mm. the rest of her life with this woman even though it's a really complicated messy relationship mm. they're always going to butt heads they're never going to be they're going to be on again off again um but i think yeah as you said she's going to have to make the choice between Barty and jesus and ultimately she chose she chooses the monastery as much as she chooses Jesus. Mm. And I think because it's where her home is. And I just, I think she doesn't, can't conceive of a life away from the monastery mm. more than anything else. And I think she feels, she wants to be a part of the community and help the community. But at the same time, she feels like she is above it a little bit. Mm. I don't know. She's such a fascinating character and I cannot wait to watch this movie again yeah i definitely need to watch it again as well more, yeah she's she is like nomi she's kind of this weird enigma where there's nomi's flinging mm. her arms around like she's a crazy person and constantly flinging her body around like i'm like you're gonna hurt yourself calm down you're gonna do something to your spine if you yeah benedetta is like i'm gonna have stigmata, like, stigmata and... <laughs> and i'm gonna have sex with buddy and i'm gonna be doing all this yeah. and i'm gonna predict <laughs> i'm gonna predict a plague so I can kind of save myself as much as mm. I save the town. It's, yeah, you never quite know where her motivations lie, which I think makes her such mm. a fascinating character. It is very fascinating. And yeah. it's, it's, again, it's just, it's amazing that, you know, even just reading snippets and people like, oh, this is sleazy. And they're going, yeah, it's a bit sleazy, but it's actually done in a way that doesn't feel sleazy. It's it doesn't feel overly exploitative which for verhoeven is weird like i was fully yeah. expecting like sleazy nun but i don't think it is yes they make a dildo out of a virgin statue of virgin mary yeah she she but even does doesn't I mean, what else are you gonna use what right? else are you gonna yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. even there's a hint of uh vanessa redgrave using the cross in the devils or is she yeah and then again with the bone and the bone they, yeah, yeah. yeah i mean they they're okay so they're fine with the cross but not with the bone yeah but mm. um so what else, so it's kind of using what you have at your disposal and yes i can see people getting a bit kind of oh that's a bit saucy and how you see the dildo actually being used and the masturbation scene but it's not actually it's very intimate it's not sleazy it's actually yeah i didn't feel like it was meant to be titillating no because it's not overly sexy it is two women just trying to um i guess explore each other explore the, the their sexuality and these feelings yeah. with what's at their disposal because 
they have more privacy to try and do this. In a place that and, doesn't have no privacy, which is because I love how the nunnery, yeah. you realise that there is no privacy. They literally just have the curtains, the curtains. except, you know, Mother Superior yeah. having, the, you know, uh, a castle essentially yes. as a room. As a room, but everyone else has, like, a, just a curtain. And the fact mm. that they have to sneak away to have privacy and mm. the fact that everyone can hear Barty screams when she's being tortured. It's, mm. it's this amazing... Yeah, this is such a complex movie. I mean, with the devils, everything is very, oh, no, this is exactly what, what I want you to think at yeah. this point in time. This movie is, well, it could be a bit of column A, it could be a bit of column B, or it could mm. even be a bit over here. I mean, you don't necessarily even know what Rampling's um, uh, motivations are, why mm. she wants, why she's defending her, even though she fully, I mean, the poor, poor Christine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't even spoken about, you know, oh Sister, my, Christina. Sister Christina. I felt so sorry for her. Ugh. I mean, it, it just she she she's... she was the she was the one who was picking up on the bullshit. Yeah. But again, like you could that see bullshit. she was like Phyllis is saying, yeah. you do realize that she's using glass. I mean, guys, come on. <laughs> mm, she didn't see it, but she suspects it, but yeah. then she lies about and Charlotte it. Rampling doesn't want to lie, but you know, she you know, Charlotte Rampling definitely understands where Christina's coming from, but mm. she feels so like she can't really do much and she says, I can't protect you. Yeah. You, you go can't go against everything. Yes. Because you're basically you're basically saying there is because Benedetta knows that if you deny her, you're saying that there is no God. That God mm. cannot actually do these things. So mm. she's knows she's kind of protected in that respect, even if yeah. if she is faking it and how much to a certain degree. With Christina, she's like fully, yep, I saw her take a glass. I saw her do this. This is obviously yeah. fake. And then they're like, are you, de so you're denying God. And she's like, huh, uh, oh, shit. Mm, um, yeah. And that beautiful scene with the comet and just her on the rampart. Oh, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's such an intimate movie. And then it just, the screen almost feels like it expands during that moment. And it's so painful. But yeah, it's, it's literally, she's, put herself into a corner where she's denying God in a place where you're not allowed to deny mm. God and fully because someone's prob probably pretending to be getting yeah. visions and can do things with her voice. Yeah, you, mm, I need to watch this movie again. <laughs> mm, it's like that. And then, of course, we get that um, suffering because they basically say to Christina after this, you've got to... Um, you know, flog yourself. Yes. So they give her the flogger and, and she's got a publicly and she does a rip, whip, yep. whip, and you see the blood. Mm. It's like, again, and we see this with Benedetta saying she has to suffer and all mm. this suffering. And it's like, my God, do you really need to suffer? Yeah, but at the same it's time, like, Benedetta doesn't really suffer. I mean, she doesn't get burned at the stake. Everyone around her suffers. She, mm. I mean, Rampley there's, gets there's the play. suffering. And she talks so much about the suffering. But she doesn't actually yeah. suffer. It's really... She pretends to suffer. I mean, if she is cutting herself, that's got to hurt because she's actually cutting into, like, yeah. you know, things you shouldn't be cutting into. Yeah. But at the same time, it's Rambling who gets the plague. It's Barty that... Um, she gets the tortured gets with the that. tortured with that. Whatever device oh. that was. That looked like the worst kind of pap smear exam ever. And you, even you're oh. just looking at it going, yeah, ouch. Um, I'm like, no. mate, I, I'm just, that guy, I would have found a way to crush him if he tried to put that near me. Me seriously. too. And just the whole thing. Ugh. Like, yeah, Joan of Arc was a great warrior. She still didn't. I'm like, no, because mm. there is no. Mm. Um, and mm. well, Christina ends up throwing herself off a wall so everyone else yeah. is going through even the um the pope's dude um is suffers because mm. he gets the plague and oh my god his death is amazing <laughs> oh my god <laughs> like, is it he played like he sort of shows up what halfway through yes. it and he's the biggest he's like you know watching um catwoman with Halle Berry again for our for the super podcast yeah. and Lambert Wilson is he's in it the, he's in it and I'm like it's so different to see him in this I didn't than it is to that but he's still so slimy oh it's even like in the Matrix movies where he's playing that old yes, program again and he degenerates every single Matrix movie. and he's so sleazy, sleazy in that yeah. as the Maravingian again Maravingian oh. very different sleazy to what this is and to what Catwoman is it's like dude, it's, dude I was even thinking like what happened to him? has he been in movies and it's like, oh no, he's it, it's just in movies that aren't in English. So no, look at him go. No, he's still great. He's, still, I love he's it. amazing and he's amazing in this. But as soon as he shows up, it gets real. There's a moment yeah. where um, Benedict is cleaning his feet 
and she, she's acting like she's but she picks off this little thing off his leg and goes I know she, you, she, I know you she's like yeah plague. you've got the plague you've got the plague you've got the plague, got the plague. Yeah. and when because basically what happens is that they free Benedetta from the pyre they all start attacking him they throw him <laughs> to the ground and then they realize because it take trying to take up his clothes because they can essentially beat him to death they all mm. I just love the moment they realize that oh he's covered in welts yikes yeah. but then this one woman just runs up and just starts st- stabbing him it's like oh my god okay. nowhere she just really hacks into him it's like jesus christ yeah crazy like there's definitely the verhovenism that you want yeah. from a verhoven movie but they're more spread out and so when they do yeah. arrive like the virgin mary uh, dildo i'm like oh shit that is of course of course this is or when he yeah. dies or when when she falls off the the christina falls off the wall it's um yeah it's all in there but it's this very long very mannered kind of movie mm-hmm. where you're just watching this performance by virginia um and you she has this blank face every single time something happens you she just goes mm. blank and it's so hard to read you can't read her as a character and yeah. she, she plays it so well it's, re- it's really a lovely performance because you Great do not know you do not mm. she has to do she has to be completely blank but yet give emotion and she does um it's got to be such a hard role to play because you could just mm. be too easy just to go i'm a blank slate i have no emotion Mm. but she does and you can tell but i love it like when christine's like i saw her with the glass she just goes blank like mm. no emotion whatsoever it's 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 an, it's an amazing performance or it really is. yeah it's, it's a very fascinating film and yeah i just it feels almost a disservice to just call it like a non-sploitation when there really is so much else to the film yeah it has those elements in there mm. there's nudity there's sex there's the you know lesbian nuns yes. masturbating yes. using a, a something as a phallic symbol mm. um all sorts of crazy things but he's put so much in there to uncover it's just what a fascinating movie i i, I really need to watch it again me it's too it's something it's, special you like can it. kind of tell he takes which he does because i think he's even been on documentaries about jesus like the actual person Mm. jesus like he's absolutely fascinated in the mysticism Mm. in the craziness and the structures and so which would be weird to have a lunatic verhoeven talking about yes jesus um jesus Jesus. (laughs) um and uh, so you can tell he's taking the subject very very seriously Mm. but he wants to get at the hypocrisy of not only the church but also benedetta and every single character that's in there it's not as clear-cut as devils where you know exactly what Mm. you're meant to be thinking and feeling or being shocked by um at every single moment benedetta you're like going huh so she's doing a thing but i don't mm. know if that's ultimately to manipulate or ultimately because she's yeah. generally doing something you never know when she's being genuine or not genuine and it's hard yet it makes it more compelling because you're just looking at this going yeah she's doing a thing i just don't know what it is yeah it's 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 so it's just yeah it's it's so hard to always say it's just like Watch this movie. Don't expect one thing or another. Just watch it. Yes, um, it is, yes, it is a sexy non yeah. lesbian non exploitation movie. But at the same yes. time, it is not a sexy. Movie. Yeah, there's <laughs> so much more to this, and that's the beauty I think of both of the films. Mm. Is that on the surface, maybe you might think they're one thing just by looking at it, mm. but it has so much to say. It's not just these fucked up visuals. There are things in there you got to unpack. Um, very complex. Uh, films but um yeah what would you give benedetta out of five i think i'm gonna have to give it five uh nun boobs (laughs) yes i like it (laughs) (laughs) um i do i want to watch it again but uh i think i'm sitting on like four Mm. dildo virgin marys out of five as it stands (laughs) um but yeah what a fascinating double feature Mm. um if if you really loved the Catholic Church, you probably won't after watching these. Um, oh, you'll either be you won't love it, or you'll be grossly offended because yeah. Benedetta is doing everything to spit on the Catholic Church, even though she believes in the Catholic Church, mm. and Ken Russell's just spitting on the Catholic Church. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely it really gives you so much to think about and all the hypocrisies yes. that come with it. But you know, hopefully, uh, anyone listening hasn't been offended by anything. 
Uh, even if you are, I'm sorry, but this is after dark. We're talking about nuns and priests and religion and Sex. phallic dildos and yes. everything. everything. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it would be interesting to kind of go back and rewatch these like a year down the track and really embrace them mm. again. It's just sort of, yeah, what a what a what a weird double feature. And I'm glad uh, you joined me for this. No, one. thank you for letting me come <laughs> on and talk about these movies because I'm like I'm like I love the devils and I really want to talk about Bened- I really want to mm. see Benedetta. This is going to be yeah. a big excuse for me to actually watch. Yeah, it. and I, it's I just, I, it's and it's always fun hanging out. So yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do it in person. Um, very soon. <laughs> With the whole COVID situation, like, yeah, we live in the same city, but, geez, we don't want to get each other sick or anything just in case. (laughs) Just in case. (laughs) But we will all hang out with Bede and everyone and get there. (laughs) But, um, no, thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure to talk about these films and look forward to having you back on in the future. And, of course, where can people check you out? On the internet and everything. Uh, well, I do have a podcast, as mentioned before, Schlock and All, yeah. uh, which is on all the apps, I think. Um, if you want to follow me, it's Schlock and All One on both Instagram and Twitter. And I just have my own reading geek on Twitter as well. So if you want to hear my ramblings, that's where they are. I highly recommend it and check out Schlock and All. You ha- always have really cool guests, interesting double features. And I love um, on your socials, you'll come up with some really bizarre double features. And I'm like, I didn't think of that. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Now you're one of the coolest. Absolutely. Mwah, mwah. Love you. Yeah. And, love you um, too. It's, yeah, it's always yeah. a blast. And I cannot, yes, you and B are coming on Clock and Awe. We will be soon, soon hopefully. Soon, yes. Yes. yes, you will be. Very excited mm. for that double. Yeah. And I haven't done this before with After Dark. So I need to remember where people can find me at. But um, the easiest way to find everything, go to After Dark Linktree, which I believe is linktr.ee slash After Dark Network. And I am on, uh, so far we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Good Pods, Reason, I think CastBox. And yeah, I'm probably pretty active on the Twitter account, which is uh, twitter.com slash After Dark podnet and there is a facebook page that you can find and i believe it is under the after dark podcast network and i i'm sorry that i don't know my links that well it is sometimes difficult to remember everything um yep. but i'm also on uh, instagram and youtube but yeah the link tree pretty much has everything there and i look forward to more after darkness and i'm glad episode one has been awesome it has so. been i'm really Ooh. looking forward to wearing after dark goes i'm very very excited and literally so useful um because <laughs> it's hard <laughs> to remember everything i know i'm like oh link tree it's the place especially because you, you have 15 <laughs> podcasts so yes it's, it's yeah it's, i've got <laughs> 120 podcasts um but this is my baby that i that i host just with yeah. me uh all the other ones it's usually me and b yeah. so it's a bit of a uh time out from Bede no no offense to Bede and Bede I'm sure will do his own podcast without me so we're not joined at the hip it's all good Uh, (laughs) but yeah no thank you so much I hope everybody enjoys the show and would love to hear some feedback I want to know what people think of these movies too and uh yeah until next time what happens after dark stays after dark bye everybody